Um, regular viewers will notice that I mentioned Simon's new platform on Substack, the the social media company that sounds like a McDonald's item. In any case, here's Simon's latest offering via share screen on it. Here we go. The equalitarian dogma. I think those of us who have been following Simon for some time uh, might recognize a few beats that Simon's used just a few times before on this one. Now, I'm going to give a link to this because this goes on for, oh, I would say a couple of thousand words or so, so I'm not going to read the whole thing. Uh, one, you'd probably all get very bored with it. Well done there, Simon. You put some nice references and a little bit of a bibliography. Get in there. The, the Force Academy uh, Endemia style is, is looking cool. Anyway, I'll read out select bits of every paragraph. I'm also in a hurry to go somewhere myself for a meeting on my own, so this may be a bit rushed. There is widespread agreement among modern experts in fields as varied and diverse as sociology, history, and education that no such thing as human races exist. Uh, yes, there is, Simon, but the problem is the way you use race and the way they are using it may be an entirely different thing. Dr. Adam Rutherford, a geneticist and science writer, is every bit as blunt summing up the orthodox early 20th first century view by stating simply race is a social construct. If taken at face value, the remarkable unanimity on this subject among many academics and scholars would render any support for the idea of a distinct and separate race is irrelevant and pointless at bits and mischievous, even wicked at worst. You're now going to see me scroll down this because we're going to find the classic and prepare yourself for this, some of you, because you'll have heard this so often from Simon. Sometimes those trying to get to grips with the supposed non-existence of human races will wonder idly about the case of domesticated dogs. Yes, we're back there. We're back with the doggies. We're back with the pups, the breeze. We're back with this comparator. We're, which all belong to the single species of Canis familiaris and yet show enormous variety in physical appearance, temperament, and intelligence. I'm not. Can Simon please tell me what type of dog I am? I. I'd like to think I'm a cuddly Labrador or something that tends to be towards being a bit chubby from eating too many chocolates. All the arguments regarding mixed ancestry and jumbled genetic heritage, which are routinely trapped out to demonstrate the non-existence of human races, could equally well be applied to pet dogs. No, Simon, they couldn't. And it's been shown to you why again and again they couldn't. It remains undeniably true that while the average parent might allow his small child to jet romp on the floor with a friendly spaniel, he'll be very ill-advised to allow the same behaviour with an American bull terrier. Simon, in your analogy here, what metaphorical role are these pit bull terriers playing? What race do they represent? Presumably, if you are using them as a comparator, they must represent some group or other. And what role do the friendly spaniels represent? After all, though these comprise only 6% of dogs in the United States, pit bulls are responsible for almost 70% of attacks on humans by dogs and over half of dogs-related deaths. Time 2014. Though he may not be aware of it, this comparison between the canine and human world has been the speculation since the 1950s. How do I think any biologist anthropologist or anyone who has looked at this subject even briefly is aware of Haldane and Simon. You are attempting to teach your grandmother to suck eggs when you are teaching, attempting to teach people who work in this field about Haldane. I am a student of English literature and even I'm well aware of Haldane's work in this because it pops up in relation to what I'm studying because some of the people I'm writing about was either students of his or were familiar with him. So I think very it's very likely scientists and anthropologists are going to be familiar with Haldane. The sound of a dog whistle going off at volumes that would deafen Jimi Hendrix on stage are sounding with that whole passage. This whole dog breeds that are violent. If this is all you've got to say, Simon, it's the same old junk. 
History teaches that as when ideology and science get mixed up, the outcome is seldom promising. Indeed, Simon, the irony in it is becoming so loud that it's getting ridiculous, and it's not just a ferrous material. One thinks of Nazi Germany, where Einstein's theory of relativity was rejected because it had been formulated by a Jew. German scientists chose to instead stick with Deutsch physics, a German physics. At the time Einstein lived, Simon, there were several theories in circulation, and not everyone agreed with Einstein's theory relative outside Nazi Germany at that. There was back and forth argumentation upon it by people originating from people who had no anti Semitic views. This led, among other things, to weather forecasting being based upon the crackpot notion of world ice, but which may have been thoroughly German, but relied upon a belief that the stars were really no more than chunks of ice. Remember, too, Soviet Russia in the days when it was ruled by Stalin, genetics and the concept were natural selection were both rejected in favour of pseudo-scientific suppositions with, accorded with the Marxist ideology in favour at that time. This was a disaster at agriculture that led to the mad theory of Lysenkoism. Anyone want to look through my video catalogue, you'll find me deconstructing one of Simon's videos using Lysenko and using references to, Sin to Simon's referenced who were influenced by Lysenko, which led that a tinge of ridiculousness. I see Simon intends to unfortunately use this platform to preach basically more racial division. Some people guessed he would anyway. I was hoping he wouldn't, but there you go. We can, as you can see, it rolls on page after page after page. I'm going to put a link to it, let you read it. Let's have a look at his bit about the Catholic Church. I always love Simon when he gets going about that. Oh, he's on about Galileo. Oh, he's quoted a particularly annoying urban myth version of Galileo's trial, which I'll come back to later in a, a video of my own. It's both true and untrue, this version of what happened with Galileo. His suggestion ran counter to the heliocentric th theory strongly held by the Catholic Church. He was tried and convicted of heresy. Let me deal with that later when I come home or tomorrow. For now, it's, a, it's more from Simon. And we have some lovely references down the bottom. Oh, he's used John Hopkins. Funny enough, I end up quoting them quite a lot as well. Let's see if he's used anyone else I recognise. Haldane, yep. Dawkins, I've read. I haven't read this bloke from the Encyclopedia of Catholicism. I vaguely recognise this one about ethnic differences. It's not my field, as I say. Um, anyone else? Adam Rutherford. Yeah, he's used that book more times than I've had hot dinners. And I recognise El Weiss. Um, let me end it there, and you can all have a a good look at it. In a way, I'm giving him free advertising, I suppose, which may be a bad thing, but it also draws attention to the fact that when let off the leash on a platform with virtually no censorship, this is what will roll out.